First of all, I came from a very political home. That was just a fluke of fate. No other people who survived, they weren't steeped in, immersed in, passionate about politics. My parents were. Actually, I'm not sure if this is the best way to begin the interview, but my parents had a very turbulent, tormented marriage. I think both of them never really recovered from what happened to them and what happened to their families on both sides. Every member of the family was exterminated, and so it was not a happy marriage. Um, but I remember my mother once saying to me that for all, your, for all the horrors of the marriage, we never disagreed on politics, meaning she and my father. And they had very strange politics by current standards. They were both fanatically pro-Soviet, pro-Russian, because they looked at the world through the lens of the Nazi Holocaust. Mm. And the Soviet Union defeated the Nazis, there's no question about that. 90% uh, of the German troops, the army, they were fighting on the Eastern Front. Um, my parents were fanatical Stalinists. Long after the Soviet Union had distanced itself from Stalin, the famous speech by Khrushchev in 1956, um, my parents would not brook any criticism of Stalin hmm. till the, their death, till their last days, their last breaths. Um, and I think they were probably the only two Stalinists left in the <laughs> world. It was very funny when I, even, let's say when I was in seventh grade, it was professor, the teacher, was Josh Abramson. And we were discussing World War II, and I didn't know better. I was defending Stalin and Russia and singing <laughs> their praises. I remember the uh, teacher, Mr. Abramson, he said that you realize how many people Stalin killed? So what do I know in seventh grade? So I went home and I said to my mother, do you realize how many people Stalin killed? <laughs> And she said, well, Stalin said that this generation is going to suffer, but the next generation will live better. Next day, I go up to go into school, raise my hand. Stalin said, this generation will suffer, but the next generation will live better. So Mr. Abramson says, in other words, you're saying, Mr. Finkelstein, he did call us by our surnames. He said, in other words, Mr. Finkelstein, you're saying that the ends justify the means. Well, I didn't have a clue what that meant. But I went home and I said to my mother, in other words, mom, you're saying the ends justify the means. And she said, well, in this case, yes. And I went back and I just repeated. I had the clue what I was talking about, obviously. Um, so you've been riling people up for years. Well, I wasn't intentionally doing it, but you understand that at that age, you're very influenced by your parents. Yeah. I remember in sixth grade, it was 1964, and it was the presidential election. It was between... Um, Lyndon Johnson and Barry Goldwater. And my parents were very, again, 64, before being anti-war was popular. They were very anti the Vietnam War. And I came to class one day and I raised my hand and I said, well, in my opinion, Lyndon Baines, President Johnson is belligerent, okay? The teacher said, sit down. You don't even know what the word means. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've heard you say something like that in interviews before. 